working woes. This is the OGM weekly call on Thursday, June 20th, 2024. OGM is open global mind. Um, and we, we're gathered here for a bit of reflection on OGM since we're just past the fourth anniversary of our very first call early in lockdown. Lockdown <clears throat> is kind of what provoked this thing. Um, so we've been sitting here for quite a while doing this thing. And um, it'd be lockdown nice to take. What... A... I'm sorry. Lockdown. Uh, sorry about. Um, huh, how do we boost the gain in your head? Um, I ah. Oh, good. Good. Is is it working yeah. better? I think so. Yeah. Lockdown is what uh, provoked the Living Between World series. Also, it was like, hey, we're all going to be thrown in Zoom. Let's let's make it good. Let's do yeah. something useful. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to hold a mirror up. Uh, and take a look. I know that a lot of what OGM is and has done or hasn't done is, is involved deeply in with my character, uh, just who I am, how I do things, and what's going on, because I'm sort of the convener of this thing, but I have a strange, uh, I have sort of a perhaps a unique uh, style for, for guiding things. Uh, and it, it sort of works. On, I don't know. There, there are things that are frustrating to me as well. And I just sent a survey out uh, on the OGM list. So um, I've oh. got uh, five responses so far, uh, including mine. But if you would, uh, even during the call, if you want to you know, take a little time and answer the, the question, but you can look at the OGM list. I'll also put a link to the survey here in our chat. So you can go directly to it. It looks like, oh, why is that not working? There we go. So that's uh, that's the survey, and I will put a link to the results in the chat. Uh, link. So actually, let me say, anyone with the link can see it. Copy link, done. Okay, so here's a link to the results, and I will screen share them in a bit when we have a few more responses and we can see what's up. But I... Um, I figured I would just kind of open the floor at the start of this call with just um, just reflections about four years of doing this thing. We uh, we've I think come to know each other in in ways that I didn't expect and that have been really cool. Uh, but I'd love to hear what you think. Well, since I don't like the silences, I have to be consistent and not have one. Love so that. I'm going to talk for a second here. Uh, you know, to me, the issue of uh, our time is the nature of society and its relationship to climate and the tragedy that this is posing for us. And the world has not been very good at having conversations about what's going on. And from my perception, uh, we're doing the same thing here. So one possibility is to look at why we have not engaged the key issues much more directly and urgently. Uh, if we can understand us, maybe it'll help us understand the world better. End of thought. Um, Doug, could you say a little bit more about what it, what the activity of engaging more directly those core questions would look like? Sure, just starting with the facts of the fact that we have a, a climate that's out of control through human activity. Uh, we people are the people who have benefited from the kind of economy that we have uh, that's hurt a lot of others. Uh, and that we would be talking about that. It would be uh, just direct engagement, starting with the facts and then what the implications are. Uh, that's as far as I can take it. Thanks, Doug. Um, anyone else? Just reflections on 
thumb piece of four years of OGM. Go ahead, Mark. You're muted. Pass, pass. On to the next one. Your hand wave was not a gesture of wanting to take the floor. Excellent. Okay. Understood. <laughs> Any, <laughs> I do like the gesturing. Uh, anyone else? Thoughts on... <laughs> Uh, Mike, please, Mike. I always have an opinion. Um, if nobody else is going in. I haven't been engaged that much for four years. I, I was mostly engaged for the last two years. Um, I, I was a little bit late because I was hastily filling out your questionnaire. Um, I apologize for not doing that earlier. But uh, I, I find that we have two different purposes here, and they alternate week to week. Um, the check-in calls remind me of something my church does. We have a, a Monday evening Zoom church, and it's an Episcopal service, so it's all over the place. It's one-third discussing real estate, one-third discussing things that are happening in our lives, and one third Bible study and you know thinking uh, thoughts of about morality, and history, and and the like, um, and and that builds a community. You share things that you wouldn't otherwise share. Um, I've learned so much from each one of you, and I, I really appreciate it. And I, I've been a little selfish sometimes. I, I will throw out a question that I'm struggling with, or a request for help in finding someone or some article. That, helped me do my work at the Carnegie Endowment. And I, I wish more people did that because I, I think that's, that that I think is a reflection of what I, I, I understand the mega mission here is, which is to explore ways that really smart people who are incredibly well read and well connected to networks of other people like that can more effectively collaborate. And uh, Jerry's brain is a case study I, I've used. I, I have a slide de dedicated to Jerry's brain in my most recent talk. Um, <laughs> Jerry's gone thermonuclear, man. <laughs> but open global mind. I mean, that's that for me is the mission here. And, and I, I'm incredibly frustrated that I have been sucking in ideas and articles and factoids for um, more than 60 years. And I, I, I don't have an effective way to, to really remember all that. And more importantly, to connect to all the people who can dig deeper, one or two or three levels deeper into all these topics. And I, I think the technology is finally there. I mean, we finally have something <clears throat> we could use not only to compile all of our wisdom like Jerry has, but build a collaborative living library. And most importantly, quickly bother people who have the 90 second answer to our question. Because if you can't get the 90 second answer, you spend five hours trying to find something that looks good and half the time it's not and at the rate things are going the internet will be 90 percent falsehoods because of all this bogus ai generated content so so the idea of augmented intelligence where we tap this global network of wisdom that's validated by smart people that that that's my dream and i i and we get to that every so often but we also get to that every time we talk to each other because we have this back and forth. We Eyes are opened because somebody hears something they'd never heard before. So that's my political speech on why I spend uh, an hour and a half every other week or 40 minutes when I can. I mean, I, I really value this, this opportunity to get together with all of you. Speech over. Um, Mike, thank you so much. And and thank you for crisply enumerating a bunch of things that really resonate for me that are part of the reason I'm here. Uh, absolutely. That really works. I, Gil, I apologize. As a bumper sticker, you know, I, 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 I often start my talks with, I learned one really important thing the first week I was in Washington working on Capitol Hill. Always have a good bumper sticker. Right. And 
our bumper sticker in my mind is fostering, saving truth and fostering trust globally. I'm just going to capture that. Be good if I spelled properly. Um, Mr. Carranza, and, and Gil, I apologize. I muted you because I was hearing a lot of ambient noise from your mic. Um, Mark, you are going to pantomime what you want to say to us. Is that correct? Okay, so <clears throat> large box, can't hear. No, we're not hearing. I can't hear. I am muted. You're muted. Anybody else want to try reading Mark? He's got laryngitis and can't talk. Jerry has to unmute you? <laughs> no, I need to Jerry. stop talking. The, I signal, need to stop talking. the signal that I was trying to express in a calm and then gradually adding. Step by step, getting to Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, shut up! Because I need some time to calm down my urge in my body, which is controlling my brain, which is controlling my mind to, oh my God, Mike, I love you. I need to talk to you right now. I just don't, I, I know you're busy. I'm super busy and I'm, I'm ah! spinning out of control, wanting to throw a container ship full of information and experience in Mike's direction, which on my screen is that way. Hi, Mike. How you doing? I'm not looking at you, but I'm covering my input channel because I'm not thinking about the one pixel deep reality that is Mike's picture. You know what, Mike, your connection in my brain is so strong and the urge to connect with you is so strong Dude, could you stop your video so I don't have to look at you? Thank you, Mike. Mike, I'm now focused on your picture. Huh, what can, that picture is giving me, it's still giving me too much information. I am pretend, now- Pretend it's Bill Gates instead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Halt, stop, pause, take a deep breath. I want everybody to get back, stand up, feel their body, take a deep breath. Notice you aren't doing that. That's perfectly fine. Not a problem whatsoever. But those of you who did, Let's say, Jerry, Jerry, I want to play a game. And I'm going to set a timer for that game. Let's see, timer, uh, delete. And how much time do I want to give Jerry? Jerry, I'm going to give you 14, 15 seconds. Let's see, how do I do that? I am here hours. Calm yourself, Mark. One, five. Oh, and I have on my phone a mistake. A mistake. Oh, my God. I'm going to reward that mistake. I pressed one, five, and my phone gave me some feedback. It says an hour and five minutes. Jerry, you have an hour and five minutes to reply to this question. What did it feel like to stand up and take a breath? 
I am going on. You can't hear me. Even though I want to talk really loud. How do I mute? I don't know. Wait, oh, there's all these pieces. Oh, fuck. Oh, ah, there it is. Oh, fuck. I've got a Macintosh. I hate Macintoshes. Calm down. Take a deep breath. You know, if you center, breathing in, you get nitrogen, which your body can turn into nitrogen oxide. And by holding your breath, you create carbon dioxide. It calms you down. <gasps> You're upset. Mark? More. Sorry. Mark? Um, you're taking us places that I'm not sure are useful to this call. And I would love the idea of paying attention. I love the idea of calming. I think it's great. Um, I'm concerned that what you're doing right now is not really working for a bunch of us on the call. I'm taken. Why don't we... Um, Come back to that you. was a, that was a timeout, Jerry. Okay, Jerry, I was trying to do a five minute mark, and I failed. And I, I don't know what a five minute mark is. I know that. I know that. I failed to explain that from the beginning. I see whose name I forgot, but I wiggled my hand on the. Macintosh and saw Pete Kaminsky. Yeah, okay. I'm now connecting in my brain Pete Kaminsky with what he looks like on this one pixel deep collaborative medium we call, uh, or I call, I call our meeting Jerry's Kids. And all of you have muscular dystrophy. Mark, can we come back to you? Mark, can we come back to you? I am happy for at any time for people to gesture to me. Stop. Hey, Mark, that's what you're doing is not working. Um, if you want to stay in and hang in, we'll come back at some point. But um, I'd rather go to the queue for a moment uh, and reflect because I don't, I don't know what you just said about the state of OGM, uh, and I'd love to stay on that topic. Um, so please, to Gil. And Stacey, I know you feel out of the queue. I'll go to you next. I, yeah, my reactions keeps coming off. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> Take a moment to get back to our theme. <clears throat> um, Um, let me start with something that Mike said. Mike, you talked about, um, um, what did you say? Uh, golly, where's in the chat here? Um, boom, 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 boom. About the ability to have 90 second answers to critical questions. I'm not here for 90 second answers. Uh, and there's a lot of talk about information and knowledge and such, and I'm not here for that either. I'm here for the conversation. Um, and I'm finding um, that, I'm increasingly finding that that's what's important to me is not questions and answers or facts or details, because it's not facts or logic that change people's minds and that move worlds. It's the, it's the kind of interaction that we have. We're modeling something here uh, that I find very rich and valuable. And when I started to say to your questionnaire, Jerry, um, which I hadn't seen before now, um, the OGM is working for me. I look forward to it. I just really I richly value the time that we spend together every week. Uh, it's working for me and there's more we can do. Um, um, what do I wish we had achieved? More diversity in the room. And I don't mean just visual diversity, but diversity of thinking. Um, what 
what's one thing I think we've achieved two things. One is blessed community. And second is rich stimulation. I come away from every call with a bucket of notes and ideas and seeds of thinking and writing and uh, um, resources to follow up on, um, which I really value. Um, and um, low hanging fruit for us. We are all of us in some kind of way, map makers. Um, Jerry, you're the, you're kind of the ultimate example of that with your brain, but uh, we all of us do that. We are all of us, uh, uh, you know, weaving and con and connecting and contexting things uh, for ourselves and for other people. And it's a very very it's an it's an exceptionally talented group of people in that regard. Um, what I see as our mission is to open global minds. Um, what I wish our mission was, was to open, was to do more to open other global minds besides our own, the people who are on this call. <clears throat> and what we might do to improve OGM um, might be more publishing, I put the word in quotes, of what we do and talk about here. And that's, you know, yeah, neo books, yeah, brains, yeah, other things, uh, other ways of bringing this conversation more wide in both interactive and non-interactive forms to wider audience. Cause there's some, there's some real gems going on in here every week. Thank you. Thanks Gil. And I think I, I had both Stacy and Rob in the queue earlier. So I'll, I'll go back to you both in that order. Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll just share what I shared with my girlfriend about why I come to these calls in the first place. Um, so four years ago when I started coming I saw this as a place where there were these really smart people with expertise in different fields where I had the opportunity to go ask questions, hear things that I wouldn't normally hear and get to watch them who I felt had more understanding about certain things than I did, not taking away my logic and judgment, but they were exposed to things that I hadn't been exposed to. And I wanted to observe them speaking with each other because that was helpful for me to formulate my opinions and my judgment. And to Doug Carmichael's point, I had been hoping that we would get to the conversations that he's wanting to have. And over those four years, what, what has happened is the reasons we don't have those conversations has appeared, but I look at that as a, as a good thing because we've addressed some of those and they've been addressed in the way we've developed relationships with each other and the way our communication with each other have, have changed. So like it's all tied in. I feel like we're at the point that maybe there could be a better structure or organization the way we approach subjects and the way they get spoken about, maybe even in different pieces, because a lot of these topics are very complex. Um, but I'll just end by saying I am grateful for the four years and you know, some of you I've gotten to know very well, better than others. And I have really strong feelings of love and, you know, I'm just grateful to be here. And that's my two cents. <laughs> oh, I, I one, more, one more thing, because I did watch last week's a very small piece. And I just want to say something about what Doug said about the space, because it's always been on my mind. I really agree with him about having too much space. And as you know, in the beginning, I was one of the people, you know, I advocated for the space. We actually called it the S protocol for a while. And what I want to say about that is the things have to have a purpose. The initial, at least from my point of view, the reason for taking maybe like a three second, you know, a three Mississippi pause was really so that as individuals, we could stop and think for a minute and say, what's driving me to speak? Because in the beginning, if I'm being honest, and I am being honest, I would feel that people were talking just to hear themselves speak, just to say, you know, like, what can I throw in? And sometimes that was like, it was just like piling on a bunch of stuff. And that's not a good reason to speak. And I think that having that space 
allowed for each person individually to question their motivation. <laughs> you know, is it something I needed to share because I'm throwing something new in, a new perspective that needs to be heard, or I'm wanting to connect, or is it my ego just wanting to show how much I know? And so again, I think the space is important, but to artificially make that space, that is not something I can stand, you know. So I just wanted to support Doug in his, you know, because when I've said it before, people have said, oh, you're uncomfortable with silence. No, I'm not uncomfortable with silence, but I'm uncomfortable with silence for the sake of silence with not a good reason for it at that time. Because I think we should always be adapting to the situation and we should be, we should be teaching ourselves to always be sensing into what does this moment call for? So now I'm complete. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I don't know who's clearing their throat, but somebody's clearing their throat into the mic a lot, and it's not lighting up on my screen, so I can mute a particular caller. But if you are, please note that. Um, Rob, did you want to jump in? Uh, yeah. So I am uh, I consider myself in the orbit of OGM. I don't go to the calls very much. Um, Jerry, I, you know that uh, I often have work uh, conflicts, and so that's just been my my not not always able to uh, to do that and frankly I was more engaged in the maybe the first couple of years than the last two years um, maybe one point is OGM isn't just the calls right so there is the mailing list and there is a, a forum chat with uh, some some usage of each and so for me understanding how they all fit together and what is the overarching purpose and you know, what What are the rules of the road for the mailing list? Um, sometimes I get things that are interesting, but um, also get, there's just a high volume sometimes. And so it it's, uh, that can be overwhelming. Um, but just, un, I, I do think I've been exposed to a lot of people and points of view that I wouldn't otherwise have been. And I'm very appreciative to that. Um, for me, I'm looking for, better ways to are to analyze the world around us. We're getting inundated with, with information and misinformation, disinformation, and, and getting better at discerning from, you know, discerning, I guess, the reality. And I think there's a lot of people in OGM that have that expertise and I like hearing from them. And, and so for me, more about the process of thinking versus getting someone's point of view is, is a, a real strength of OGM. And sometimes you get that and sometimes you don't. Um, but uh, thanks, thanks for letting me speak a piece. Thank you um, very much. Uh, Hank, please. Well, I agree with uh, what most people have said so far. Uh, I find these calls a wonderful online space. They're full of inspiration, wonderful new references to articles and podcasts and books, challenging ideas. And what I think OGM has certainly accomplished in the last four years, it's made a safe conversational space for the 25 to, to 30 people who regularly show up. And where can you find a safe conversational space for 30 people these days? Uh, so I'm very optimistic about what it has been, but I'm also aware that it could be more. So I'll echo a number of people uh, who said there could be more diversity, more women, more younger people, more people from Europe, Asia, and Africa. And whether they take part in all of the calls, uh, they might take part in spin-off uh, initiatives, spin-off calls like we had for discussing Dawn of Everything, where or democracy, where we go out and, and target people who we think will help uh, add to the perspectives in the, in the conversation. 
And I'll also echo Doug on, on his his concern about the key questions of today. So I think possibly one way to move forward is to try to create some legitimacy in the public space about our ideas on core issues to society. Because uh, I don't think many people outside the OGM lists know about what people on the calls think. And I think these perspectives would be valuable for helping open minds around the globe. Uh, so I think uh, possible spin-offs could be short uh, online thought experiments or articles uh, uh, based on the specific theme calls like we had on democracy. Uh, and I certainly think that the mission of OGM uh, should be midwifing things that are trying to emerge. And that's something I heard on one of my first OGM calls about two years ago, and it stuck with me and I use it to describe OGM whenever I try to get people interested in joining, midwifing things that are trying to emerge and maybe you're having some problems emerging. That's my contribution. Very much. Uh, that's I, I like the midwifing analogy a lot. Um, Mark, you're welcome to jump in if you stick to topic. Your hand is up. Thank you, Jerry. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I appreciate what you do. Let me stop, pause, take a deep breath, and restart. Okay. I am playing a game right now called Five Minute Mark. I am limiting my mm, expression here to five minutes. And my goal is to make it a lot less than five minutes. If I can get everything that I wish to say out in less than five minutes, I win. And I reward myself. I stand up, I take a drink of water, I give my body what my body is telling me to do. Mark, you so Mark, Mark, um, that has nothing to do with OGM. It's a noble experiment on your Thank part, you. which I, I love. But Jerry, really, Jerry, I want to ask you to stick to, to the topic. Jerry. I'm doing something which I'll explain. It is on topic, but you don't understand yet. What I want to do is shut down my output, listen really carefully. Jerry, in the shortest and quickest amount of time, what do you want me to contribute to us? What is the topic? Uh, so right now we're reflecting on four years of OGM, what we have done, what we haven't done, what we could do. Uh, I've been really interested. Uh, Mark, you have you have tended a mind, not a mind map, but a memory longer than I have. And I would love to have seen that in the public space. And I think a couple of people like Eric uh, Rangel and others have played with it and uh, worked with you. And I, I, you know, that's interesting to me that 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 piece of what you've done is hugely important. Um, uh, experiments like five minute mark are really interesting, just not on topic for this call. I have listened to you, Jerry, and I'm going to take a deep breath and slow down and start with gratitude. Jerry, I was about to say, I'm really grateful for what you are or for what you do, but no, I'm both grateful for who you are, what you've done and what you're attempting to do. Thank you, Jerry. Can I have a show of hands who feels the same way for what Jerry's done? I'm going to raise my hand going dark. There we go. Okay, we're moving our bodies. Some people are not listening. I can see that. Some people are hitting, you know, emojis. Thank you, Doug, for, um, you know, uh, shutting down off the video channel. I have shut off my video channel so I can gesture without distracting people. Now, 
four years of OGM. My deepest feeling is thanks. Oh my God, am I thankful. I don't know how to express that thanks in a safe, calm, clear, coordinated, organized way. But now that I know that that is a purpose that I can isolate and take from something, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, put aside. I don't need to express my thanks right now. Right now, Jerry wants reflections on four years of OGM. And I can say, you know what, Jerry? I can't because I'm so overwhelmed with gratitude that it's trying to force its way out of my body and I'm feeling emotions and it's, it's dysregulating my ability to speak, my ability to regulate other emotions. So I'm going to pause, learn from this, exhale, slow down, and invite people to use hand gestures that I can see, but not speak and not use emojis. I hate emojis. Mark? I hate. Sorry, Jerry. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to consolidate what I've learned, but I want my message to solidly be a black hole mass five zillion times the mass of our son of gratitude as a gift to you, Jerry. Thank you. That is uh, the number one most important highest priority message. Mark out. Uh, Jerry, Mr. Kronza, I am grateful for your gratitude. Stacey, what do you, what do you have can, to say? Can I jump in? Mar Pete, do you mind? Can I just say one thing? Please, thank you. Mark, I, I just want to share with you for a minute that I understand what you're doing, but when you do this, I'm speaking for me, you're changing the, the rhythm of the whole call and you're bringing some of us along with you. And I don't know that we all wanna go. So I understand what you're trying to do with the speed that you're going with, but maybe you can do that offline on your own and wait until, cause we're all in a flow and you're changing all of our flow to accommodate you. And it's being, unco it's, it's uncomfortable for me. I don't wanna speak for anybody else, but I have the sense that it goes for other people as well. So I, I understand it's the normal flow for you, then maybe you should back out a little bit. Um, I understand it's really important to you. I'm reading in the text, but I, ju I just wanted to share that. Um, okay, thank you, Pete, for letting me go first. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Mark. And let's let's go to Pete. Um, thanks, Stacy. Stacy, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, I back to uh, reflecting on OGM in the last four years. I the um, I I think there's I, I share I think a, probably a, a lot of this uh, uncomfortableness with where we've gotten to and what we've been able to do and things like that. Uh, and wishes that it might have been different. But at the same time, I think we have a wonderful thing. And Jerry, thank you. Um, uh, OGM has been a great place. Uh, uh, it acts like a convening place to, to bring people together. And then uh, kind of like Rob said, there's a lot of OGM that doesn't happen within the calls or within the mailing list um, or within uh, Mattermost. There's a lot of stuff that, that is OGM that's a little bit outside of that. Um, read the plaques. Uh, actually, this, by the way, this, uh, this week's issue has two amazing pieces, very deeply affecting. I, I think you should read it and, and uh, uh, not for me, uh, for some of the contributors. Um, uh, I, so I don't have, a, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think we should try to change things. I think we are what we are and, and I'm okay with that. I think, I mean, you know, we should try to improve. Uh, I would like, love the idea of more calls like this. 
Um, and then if we did it right, we wouldn't just talk about what we might want to change, but we would try little experiments to change and come back. And, you know, it's, I think we all know this iterative uh, process improvement stuff. Um, it's not hard. Um, it's hard to do. Uh, it's hard to make yourself do it, but we could. Um, and I think we should. Um, the, uh, the, the thing that I wish, my, my kind of main wish is, uh, I feel like I don't know people very well. Um, I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know why you do the things you do. Um, I know each of us has a, a bumper sticker or two, to use Mike's words. Um, we have a, a, you know, we have a soapbox and we, we, there is some part of our life that's very important to us and we get very passionate about it. And, you know, for a number of us, I can kind of rattle that off, but I don't really know the person behind that. Um, and I don't know, you know, I, 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 back to kind of what I said a, 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 in a previous call, I feel like we end up on soapboxes a lot, you know, banging the drum for our cause. Um, and I think we all have important causes. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that, but why do we have those causes? You know, what, what's, you know, what are we thinking? Um, who are our families? Uh, how do we live in the world uh, when we're not in OGM? There's a bunch of stuff about us that I feel like I don't know and that I kind of hunger for, I long for. Um, uh, so I don't know how we would, you know, uh, I don't, I actually, I've got a, I, uh, I've got an idea. I, I think I'm going to do an experiment too, uh, to kind of like uh, your form, Jerry. Um, I think we mind melded this morning when I was getting out of bed, I had this great idea and it, it involves a questionnaire, but uh, also something completely different. Um, uh, but anyway, um, maybe it's, uh, I would love people to write more in the Plex. Um, we hear some great stories from a few people. Um, please send more and we'll get more people to read, read stuff. Maybe it's on calls. We have some kind of calls where we explore parts of ourselves that, that we haven't, um, you know, that we don't see. Um, each of us has more than, you know, the one face that we bring to ODM, I know. Um, and I want to see more of those faces. I want to see more of the, the um, more of, more more of us, more three-dimensionality. Um, thanks again, Jerry. Um, OGM is a great and wonderful place. Thank you. And a piece of what you're saying is what I think I, I'm frustrated by in OGM, which is I want us to externalize more of who we are and what we think and how we think it in whatever means makes us happy and comfortable. <clears throat> and I don't, I, we, like at most we have blog posts. I'm like, you know, Blog posts are okay, but there's so much more we could actually be doing in different ways. And there's a lot to say about that, but I'm gonna to go to Klaus. Yeah, along the same lines is what um, others and others have just said. I'm really grateful uh, for this group. And Jerry, you have been uh, so supportive uh, uh, throughout these four years on little side excursions that each of which helped me, you know, to to advance um, my understanding and and my my uh, uh, engagement in in my specialty, which is uh, food and agriculture, and uh, um, and it, it is it is enriching you know, to to talk with with folks who are all you know, uh, deeply engaged in their own universes, you know, in your own individual context. So you have different perspectives because, you know, you, you're looking at the world through different lenses. Uh, and that all helps to, you know, to widen you know, uh, your, your personal uh, uh, vision and your reach and so on. I'm, um, I think like many here, particularly, you know, Doug, I'm highly alarmed at, to where we are drifting you now. Um, the the and because maybe my particular emphasis looking at food and food systems and the importance of that to uh, to really our collective survival, right? I mean, um, I'm I'm maybe more intense uh, at times to uh, you know, express my opinions and and. Uh, uh where i'm at but i'm i'm uh yeah you know, my son my son is visiting and 
we went out for dinner yesterday and and so he wanted to brought me to to say well it's going to be okay you know i mean there are so many things we could be doing we're going to be okay and i said yeah i don't see it you know because they, these things we could be doing these things but we're not you now and we are, we are paralyzed uh, by so many different things and you know uh, so observing this political process and the conflicting interests you know within the economy that prevent us from responding to this crisis we are in you know is an incredibly stressful thing uh, for me you know, because it's it's I mean you, you you just think here's where we where we should be going we should be seeing this and then it's just not the case but at the same time we are keeping each other informed enough to where to where um you know you look you look at the world from different perspectives and um and and so in and uh you know and, and broaden your understanding so that's sort of basically i don't know what we could be changing that would make any dramatic improvements i think we are doing just fine um I, I i loved the dawn of everything book club that we have because it was amazingly enriching you now to to share uh you now what uh, this 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 deep book i would love to do another book club of some sort you now if something comes out um i don't think i would know what i know about ai if it hadn't been for ogm you know and our neo book project um which got me you know so deeply engaged in this so so no i'm uh, i mean i feel i feel we are uh helping each other to to uh um go deep you now in our own individual sphere and this is wonderful so yeah, Jerry, maybe we should just keep doing what we're doing and uh, add some side steps to it that uh, that help to you know, broaden it. Thanks, Oz. It's really good to hear, um, Mr. Vitello. Thank you, Jerry. Um, you know, I've been a lurker um, on this. I've been coming to the neo book sessions, and so uh, unfortunately, I work on Thursday, but I'm off for the next three weeks, so I can pop in. Um, so my perspective will be more of an outside in perspective. And, um, you know, I, I would, I would like to sort of maybe point out some potential paths of evolution. Um, and, you know, I've said this to you before, Jerry, I marvel at your brain. It's amazing. So the, on the one hand, there's that on the other hand with AI, and I'm finding that, well, AI, how, do we need Jerry's brain? I don't mean to say this in any way, but you know, do we need is Jerry's brain? It is a question um, because uh, I think it's a question worth asking. You know, uh, as we evolve, or how can Jerry's brain evolve into AI Jerry's brain, or whatever? Uh, you know, uh, so I, I just put that out as a challenge, and and one of the things that I would like to so maybe push the envelope is, is, is to going beyond this amazing sort of social cohesion of intellectual enrichment. Um, but it's somewhat insular. And the question, if it really wants to go beyond that sort of, you know, inner core of people, and I belong to different groups and I observe them and whatever, and there is a huge comfort in the social cohesion of being in a community. On the other hand, if it wants to have an ethical purpose beyond the boundaries of that organization, it may have to change how it does its learning process. So um, I would like to suggest that there should be some experimentation about different learning modalities that isn't uh, facilitated focus and it's broken into small groups. I mean, I have ideas about this. I can talk to you afterwards, Jerry, about some of the ways in which so if you have something that maybe is into like this, but then there's something else where it's actually inviting people from outside that would encourage the diversity that people are yearning for, then what would, what would make it attractive for people to come and find out more about it? And the last thing I want to say, and I, I hopefully this will evoke discussions from other people, is the framing. Uh, you know, the, the idea of open global mindset, it's been going on for four years, is that the brand it wants to continue? And if it wants to expand its influence beyond 
this social cohesion of intellectual enrichment, what would the name change? And I'll just throw up one idea, but it's the spirit of the idea, not the words that matter here, which is what about open global networks? If you're trying to develop, you know, in the spirit of neo books, how do we create living books, living learning communities that are organic in the spirit of the book plurality, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to, and maybe that might be a book to look at because that is, I was blown away by the Amapur interview that was on, was it last night or the night before? I put the link in there and I was thought, wow, how do they manage to deal with the political polarization in Taiwan with the threat of China? I mean, that was a phenomenal achievement. I'm thinking we have so much to learn about their open system of using digital platforms to mitigate against this information. So I think it, it's, it's a question of, you know, declaring what the purpose is. If it wants to stay as it is, and people may feel very comfortable, that's fine. If on the other hand, there is a spirit of saying, well, let's, how can we, how can we break this out of this sort of uh, cocoon, so to speak, uh, and, you know, undergo metamorphosis into a beautiful butterfly that can have amplified impacts then we have to have different learning methods. And I'm quite happy to contribute with anybody else who'd be interested in experimenting with innovative learning methods. And that's my say. And over to the next speaker. Uh, Rick, thank you very much. Um, Stuart Curl's uh, name says he's got a hard stop at the top of the hour. Do you mind if he goes before you? Carl, floor is yours. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. Not sure how many years I've been participating. Of course, I've known Jerry for, it's gonna be 25 years that I, um, that I met Harlan Hugh at a conference <laughs> I, um, and things. So yeah, we've had great conversations about uh, uh, the brain. Um, I've been um, taking a course from the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and uh, it, they picked up on Doug Engelbart's idea of a network improvement community and have developed, blended in Deming and have a whole improvement science process. So that's what I'm going through. And then um, some of the stuff I've been looking at, it reminded me of the book from years ago um, where they talked about the fishnet organization where you kind of, you can pull up on the fishnet. So there's like this temporary hierarchy you know, somebody takes project lead and um, things. So I think that's an organizational structure I'm looking at for these network improvement communities. And that ties in with what people were saying earlier about, I see this as, well, this is kind of like the hub kind of thing. And we have a conversation and it's, um, this can't really scale um, much, but it can be, uh, we could, do some offshoots like we have done on some topics and um, this, um, the idea of the process improvement. I mean, in some ways this is one of my uh, network improvement communities. And then it's at a much deeper level than almost any other community I'm, I'm in. So I'm grateful for the um, conversations. And, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, Carl, thank you for raising the network um, networked improvement communities back to, into our attention. I'd love to, at some point, maybe offline, go deeper into: Are we one of those? And if not, how could we be more of one? Or what would what would manifest Engelbart's vision of those well? And what part of that is good is like very resonant with us? So, so thanks for that, uh, Stuart. So I'm. Um... Pardon me. I share in the attributes of gratefulness. And by the way, that wasn't me clearing my throat earlier. I share, I share in everybody's um, praise of the value um, here, just in conversation. Um, I think it was about three years ago, you know, when I decided I only wanted to be in conversations like this. Um, and lo and behold, uh, OGM showed up, um, and I, I, 
it's not like I look forward to the calls, but I enjoy every single call. It's like a respite from day-to-day, moment-to-moment activity. Um, and the first thing that pops up and pardon me, in my mind, is that um, the world is created in conversation. Um, and that's the one thing we, we really don't do that much of. In other words, uh, our process often seems to get in the way of conversation. And um, it's more about individuals speaking. Um, and so I think we can tweak things in some way. I don't have a, a specific uh, suggestion in my mind, but it's something to think about how we can we can tweak that so there's room for more um, interactive conversation. Um, you know, maybe if maybe it, if we just drop the element of mindfulness in, so that there can be um, engagement and and more digging deeper as two people are involved in the same subject. Um, the other thought that pops up is um, having a mindset of what might we do? What might we do? Um, I heard Gil, I, I didn't hear Doug, but I have a sense of what <laughs> he said earlier in the conversation. What might we do? Um, to the parts of the world that are burning down. Um, I don't know how to how to move that into action or projects or, and it's really interesting to hear myself say that because for so many years before OGM, all I wanted to do in any group that I was part, what can we do? What are we gonna do? Um, somehow that's quieted down in this group. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe it's because the value of, of, of um, what happens here uh, is enough. I don't. I don't know the answer to that question, um, but it is important, as as Gil said, to disseminate the word dissemination to get these ideas um, out there. Um, I know um, that the Neo Book Project, I think, could be a very important project. Um, I, I, and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll phrase that differently. It will be a very important project. Um, example, you know, personal example, the manuscript I'm working on, there's lots of stuff that I suggest in there that I don't have the expertise, nor do I specifically want to go do it as a research project. But the idea of having a place where people contrib can, can contribute to, um, things in the world we live in that need solutions or change um, is a beautiful um, opportunity of, of the Neo books. Um, I think that's all I want to say. Um, thanks, Stuart. You're reminding me of something that Marc-Antoine has mentioned on the Free Jury's Brain Calls, uh, which is there's a, I think a philosopher named Chantal Mouffe uh, who writes about agonism and she's a critic of deliberative democracy. And before I heard this line of thinking, I was a big fan of deliberative democracy and rational discourse and <clears throat> slowing people down so that they can like listen to each, the whole slow discourse thing. And agonism is sort of like, you know, a fair fight is more productive and more honest and better and, and leads to better results than trying to make everything sort of logical and, 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 and deliberate. And I don't know how I feel about the whole thing. I haven't really thought it all through, but I just put a couple of links in the chat uh, about that. Uh, free Jury's Brain Calls happen on Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, answering Gil's question on the chat. Uh, and we started out with the mission of getting me out of the brain software. Uh, we've not succeeded in that but we've gone all kinds of interesting places. And it's, uh, again, a sort of a, it's the geekiest corner of uh, OGM, I think. So there's a much more uh, technically deep talk, like Marc Antoine is trying to uh, build models that represent, that deconstruct and represent um, uh, what, we, what we're saying. Imagine, imagine, Gil, if speech act theory were, were taken apart and put into code in some way that's reusable. 
He's also working on a project with Society Library with Jamie Joyce there uh, to incorporate some of his work into their platform, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one, thing, one thing that hasn't come up that occurred to me late about OGM is that I think we've also been a bit of a meeting place for people who then ran off and did something together. And I've, I've seen a lot of people who are no longer on our calls, but I'm pretty sure they met here and they were like, phew, we should do something together. And they like went off and did stuff. And I think part of the reason we have less diversity uh, than we otherwise might is that some some people who are don't look like my demographic uh, met other people and like said, you know, let's let's pair up and do something substantial together. So I like that about it. I really like I in my life like rubbing people together against each other to so that they can figure out whether they want to collaborate and go do something. I'm I'm happy about that as a byproduct. And I don't feel the need for them all to, to come in. Um, Mark, I'm gonna skip you until deeper into the call, uh, just to, to stay in, in the flow that we're in, but I'll come back to you. Uh, Ken, please. So first I wanna say, hello, Dave Gray, nice to see you. I don't think I've seen you in these calls before. And Remzi, I don't know if you've been here before or not, but you're new to me, so welcome. Um, I used to run Barry Soul Society for Organizational Learning, and um, we um, met 10 times a year, and we met for five hours. It was really cool. We had a Friday, and we'd, we'd go from 10 until 3, so we could, we'd invite people in and ask them to do a really deep dive. Take us somewhere. We can't go in 90 minutes, and um, one day I invited someone from IDEO, and he said, you know, at IDEO, we used to run our meetings, and at the end of the meetings, we'd do the plus delta. You know, what did you like? What would you change? I realized after a little while that that people were just remembering what they wanted to change. They didn't remember the good stuff about the meeting. So we thought that's not how we want people to leave and, and carry the meeting. So we switched to a format of I liked, I wish, I wonder. And that way um, we started to get much better feedback about the meetings and people uh, started to appreciate the meetings in a deeper way. So I didn't answer your survey, Jerry, but I did uh, complete in almost poetic form. When I think of OGM, I like, no, I love the people first and foremost. I like the way we talk together. I like the things we talk about. I like to hear how people are doing. I like to hear what people are doing. I like that we listen respectfully to each other. I like that we challenge each other. I like that we hold each other to a very high standard of contribution. I like that everybody here is absolutely brilliant. I like that Pete puts together the Plex twice a month. I like that Jerry's a great host. I like that we range around exploring widely diverse topics. I like the level of emotional maturity here. I like the level of tech weeniness, weeniness here. I like that I get to recite poetry to an appreciative audience. When I think of OGM, I wish that our group was more representative of the people I see on the street. I wish that we had more women who show up and keep coming back. I wish that we had more younger voices. I wish that we took the time now and then to hold calls with breakout rooms so we can get to know each other better and dive into certain topics more deeply in small groups. I wish that we convened more book clubs. I really wish we created a more robust visual memory to track our collective thinking and reflect back to us the history and state of our conversations. When I think of OGM, I wonder why so many of the women who've shown up in the past have decided not to come back. I wonder why some folks who were here earlier have not returned. I wonder how we can bring more youthful voices into the conversation. I wonder what it will take to bring in more ethnic, racial, and gender diversity. I wonder what people want to get out of showing up here. I wonder what raise our profile among people so we'd have a larger cohort. And I wonder what else is possible with such a gifted group. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you always for your gift of, of poetry and presence for us ongoing pleasure. I really look forward to, to seeing what resonated, what alchemy you uh, you concoct for a poem at the end of calls. Um, and if I wish, I like, I wish, I wonder, is that written up someplace online? Uh, Ken, if it is, can you send a pointer? If not, um, it would be a good thing to put up as a, as a liberating structures the pattern. Yeah, no, I I um I just got this from this guy at, who worked at IDEO, and uh, that was around 2009 or so. And I've been using it over the years as a way to give feedback to people um, because I find it extremely effective. Um, 
you know, I do a lot of coaching and, and when people say, how do I give feedback to employees? Like, do not use the shit sandwich. Dude, you're so awesome at this, but you suck at that. But you're really good at that because all the members what's between the bread, right? So I like, I wish I wonder never says anything negative, but it puts it in the phrasing of, you know, I really love it. You do this. And, and I wonder, you know, could you do this? And I, I wish you were doing that. And here's some things it gets people thinking. And, um, I just found it to be an enormously powerful thing. I, I use it in my coaching all the time. So I thought I'd throw that in here. Love that. I wish Zoom had a feature. I, I mean, I'm doing the AI smart summaries and all that kind of stuff. I wish Zoom had a feature where you, we could note the thing you just said, call it out, clip it, and post it on Insta or YouTube immediately, just without without a lot of effort. Um, because I think a lot of things like that show up in our conversations that we don't harvest. Because I have to remember it happened. I have to go back to the recording. It's probably me because I'm the only one touching the actual recording, blah, 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 blah. You know how that runs. But but nuggets like that are, are wonderful. Um, thank you. Uh, Mark, I know you're going to set a timer for one minute. Let me go to Michael, who has not participated in the conversation yet, and I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, thank you for your patience. But Michael, the floor is yours. Um, and thanks, Mark, for letting me go first, because I actually I think I may have to jump pretty soon. Um, I wanted to say thank you for the last, I don't know how long it's been that I've been coming here now, um, three or four years. I haven't been coming here as much of late. Um, I do want to say that, um, as other people have mentioned, I really feel the homogeneity of this group. And, uh, you know, I, I, early on, I thought, you know, there were moments, and I, I was not alone in this, where I just thought, I can't participate in this group because it feels wrong to be in a group that feels feels like it's self-selected as um, somewhat exclusionary and and can't seem to can't seem to make it work to bring other people in. And I I want us to try and and be um, a support group um, for doing something about that um in the rest of our lives if we can't do something about that here i mean I, I feel like this is the most homogeneous group that that i participate in you know i was making a list you know that it's it's uh 90 male 90 white 90 in the us 90 urban 90 college educated 90 gray-haired or balding 90% liberal, 90% straight, 90% bearded, and 90% uh, wear glasses. spectacled. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and that's that's kind of incredible <laughs> to, to be that alike. Um, so that out of the way, um, I I love this the the feeling. You know, there, there's something joyous in being with people who you relate to because they're they're like you, um, and um, and I, I I do think because we're alike in being privileged um, that it's incumbent on us to do more than we do to um to make make change i mean as as a group i know individually we're all doing what we can to make change but i think as a as a council um it would be useful for us to form some kind of sub action groups in different categories that um that would i'm sure you know I know there are a lot of us who are involved. Every one of us desires for there to be um, some technology that allows us to um, benefit from each other's knowledge and expertise, and then have that technology go out into the world and make us all um, smarter and and more more focused and and effective. Um, and there probably, you know, 
a good dozen of us in the greater community who are actually involved in in building a technology like that. You know, Mark Antoine's not here. There's, you know, Vincent's not here. There are any number of people who are are doing that. Um, for us, I don't think we can do it in the Thursday sessions themselves, but for us to have a, a working group around that technology um, that would would do something toward freeing Jerry's brain, but you know would be um, broader than that, I think would be really useful. And I think there are probably a half dozen other working groups we might um, think of creating um, that would be useful. And, and then that kind of lets this space be this space and go where it goes. Um, uh, but, uh, but lets us perhaps be more effective. My two cents. Um, thanks, Michael. I just want to reflect for a second um, my own feelings about OGM's diversity. Um, cause I think it's really important. We've tried a couple of times and gotten kind of no place because the, um, very funny, but kind of tragic 90% riff you just did is all too true. Um, first, I think, I think 90% of us really, really wish there were people more representative, uh, in the, in the room, uh, maybe the other 10% are totally comfortable. This is what it is. But I think, I think we're all not happy about the, the diversity in the room. Um, I personally think it's not honest or useful to ask people who don't look like me to, hey, come over here and participate in my conversation so we can be more diverse. I think that's totally a stupid thing to try. It's uh, not good use of anybody's time. It's like a moronic thing. So my, my attempt, and I don't think I've done enough to do this, uh, is to go help people who don't look like me in different ways and participate. And if they want to come join my conversation, great, but can I be helpful? And I don't think I've done enough of that. Another thing we might do, and I don't know if this is actually helpful and I'd love to know, is could we spend more times, more time, more of our time and effort and, and, and sweat equity on topics that matter to people who don't look like us that are actually really like central and important. And if we then focused our calls on things uh, of essence to other people. Now, you could also say, hey, a bunch of you know white older guys mostly are going to go talk about this other thing that they're not representative. What do they know? And that's a legit critique. And I don't actually know how to address that. So I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I would love to sort of, I, I would love to solve this in different ways. Um, but I find that the spirit we have here and our ability to do stuff uh, brings me back and keeps me hosting these and doing them. I, I love the conversations we have. I love the the vibe we create. And I get a lot of ahas from our conversation. Right? The, the aha per minute ratio is really, really juicy for me. Um, so that kind of keeps me uh, keeps me going here. Uh, Gil has a short comment on diversity and then um, I'll, I'll do one minute mark and then Rick. So go ahead, Gil. Yeah, I'm a mixed minds on this. I'm, I'm not so interested in diversity for its own sake as a thing as a percentages that we need to hit, but I, I'm very interested in diversity because in none of us is as smart as all of us. Um, and the more and the more the merrier in that spirit. I think the thing for us to do, <clears throat> Jerry, I, I agree very much with what you said. Um, and it's not to try to hit any kind of quotas, but for all of us to think about who we know who feels like OGM to us and specifically to look beyond the 90% that Michael so beautifully characterized. And we had an experience with that when we were putting together the advisory board for uh, for critical critical path capital, and it looked like this. Uh, and you know, someone asked me about several people asked me about that, and it was really fascinated to to observe my initial response, which was, "Well, I don't know anybody of color, gender, da da da, da diversity who fits the professional experience and needs that we have." And as the words came out of my mouth, I thought, "That's utter bullshit." But that was my that was my native response as a white man in this culture. And I thought for a moment and I very quickly came up with a list of 10 stunning people of color, female, et cetera, who were perfect fit for our advisory board, contacted them and added them. So the you know, the quote affirmative action that I needed to take was think outside my habit and just look a little bit more broadly, not to 
not to dilute my specifications or my criteria, or in this case, you know, the interest and focus of people on this call, but to just think outside the familiar for who do we know who would be a wonderful addition to this that would enrich our diversity. And I think that's something rather than, um, you know, uh, um, feeling frustrated that we don't have more diversity here is each of us invite one or two other people over some number of months who broaden the complexion of these calls. I think that shouldn't be that hard to do and could be really juicy. Thank you for letting me jump the queue. Thanks, Gil. And I know that some of us have done a really good job of what you just said. Uh, Ken has invited several people who've come into the call. I, like, I, I know that that's happened over time. And I'm realizing I forgot one to say one thing about my stance on diversity, which is, um, and it was Rob who pointed out, and it, this was an obvious thing, uh, we're all pretty left-leaning. There are some of us who are sort of in the middle. Uh, nobody's on the hard right. Uh, and I don't know how I feel about that because... Um, I think we I, I think we would benefit from people who have a very opposite perspective from us on, uh, on the political spectrum or on the socioeconomic conversation or whatever else it might be. I don't think it's just politics. I think it's just cool. an approach to how to fix things in the world. Um, and we don't really have that. I don't think I don't think anybody who who's very opposite to us uh, knows about us comes in here or. And I think they would feel safe, but I'm not sure. I think that we have a safe space. Uh, within boundaries of our conversational kind of comfort zone. Um, oh. And I'm wondering what would happen if somebody with really different uh, attitudes and approaches about things we care about uh, were to sort of come blazing in with elbows out or something like that. I, I'm, I'm very interested. Could I just it's add really... something to that, Jer? Real quickly, I've, I've, I've had some of those kind of conversations. They're remarkable and, and deeply enriching for everybody concerned if they're done right. Uh, but that's not necessarily what we're doing here. So I think we need to consider what kinds of conversations we want to have and who we want to have in them. I'd also say that it's okay to have conversations that are not diverse. You know, I that do, have a certain do, level of comfort yeah. and agreement already. And, you know, so, and we can choose where we want to be in that spectrum. Yeah. I do want to say that a lot of the things that we talk about are about how to convince people not like us, the people with, who aren't in the room. <clears throat> and um, a lot of the problems we're talking about uh, depend on changing the minds of people not like us or joining them. I don't know what it is exactly, but but yeah, I think I think we're not helping ourselves by being really quite homo homogenous in our point of view. Even though I think we bring really different approaches to what that point of view is, but I think we're we're generally pretty roughly aligned. Uh, Mark, you have one minute. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you, Gil. Gil. I listened very closely to everything you said. I was only able to take notes uh, about 1%. That's fine, no problem. A little introduction. I'm Mexican on my mom's side, Costa Rican and Swedish on my dad's side. And I'm in many different roles at the Internet Archive. I am an engineer, but I'm also a member of the user experience team. And I pay attention to not user experience, but when I'm in a role and I'm in a role here in our OGM conversation as someone who really appreciates the learning that I get from here. I'm at 15 seconds. So I'm in many of these meetings, probably about 20 different kind of group meetings and this is the worst experience for me of all those 20 other meetings and I'm trying to slowly dismiss that help to make this meeting work for me thank you so much thank you thank you thank you over and out. thank you Mark um that was great uh, Rick, then Gil, then Doug, and then we're getting very close to the end of our call. Yeah, I, I'd like to build on a theme that uh, Michael brought up about the uh, the grain cocoon that I referred to earlier. And I actually, I'd feel uncomfortable inviting people to come to this group um, because of the nature of the group. Um, that 
if I had somebody who was, you know, you're trying to reach out to different demographics. So I want to build on the point you are making, Jerry. You actually have to, I'll mean, tell you two brief stories in my career, two particular points. One, back in the 1990s, I ran a faculty development program in family medicine. It was a commitment to get minorities into the program. And I actually went to Puerto Rico and visited the residency training programs, went around them, spoke and whatever. And the guy who drove me around was a chief resident. He got to know me and he got to know me and I wasn't trying to recruit him. He decided he would apply to our fellowship program. So he was the first, first Puerto Rican physician uh, that, that applied to our department. So, you know, it's the personal outreach. You have to go and understand the context of other people's lives, where they're coming from. And if they show curiosity, fine. Uh, and uh, the, the other is, um, you know, how can you actually, you know, build on that, but have an offering as well? Not just to come to this, but is there something that you could offer if people want to take and use what you've developed? Say it's a learning process innovation for helping their community learn how to do something that they're interested in, somewhat similar along the lines of the book on plurality, which I need to go into more details of. But, you know, it takes and one other example. I was on a... Um, it was the professional liaison committee for the Society of Behavioral Medicine back in late eight nineties, and we had the same thing. We were trying to diversify uh, different organizations. We identified a group of people who had different professional relationships to different organizations and did outreach to those organizations to form bridges. So it created a network. So I mean, I think there's some very specific strategies that can use if open global mindset wants to do outreach and expand its sphere of influence it may decide it doesn't want to which is fine you know i mean you know talking about you know what gil was saying maybe this is fine and we go off on our merry ways and do what we can in different groups is it the function of this group to do that i don't know and lastly i want to just say something about ken's contribution creativity and poetry writing um, I, I shared something with Jerry. If you want to use it, that's fine. But I've been playing around with Suno, and it is a blast for creativity and songwriting. And, you know, if there is time and you're interested, you could play one minute of that at the end, if there's interest. Um, and, you know, what you said, uh, Ken, you, if you wanted to, you could turn that into a song. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, I'm just having a blast with it. I've been working on this for a couple of weeks now. I've compose 30 different songs on things that I think are socially relevant. And this is where the power of music can be incredibly powerful that goes beyond consciousness raising, and it can actually engage people in learning communities. So how can we synergistically use music to hook them in to learning experiences that they want to stay involved with? So anyway, that's my two cents. Thanks, Rick. Can you put a link to the song that you had sent to me in the chat so that whoever wants to can go listen to it? That would be great. And then we probably come back to it on a, on a future call. Um, yeah, Pete's already got Suno the app uh, in the in the chat, but let's go there. My queue kind of melted. Uh, raise your hand if you were in the queue and you somehow fell out and really want to talk. Otherwise, I'm going to Doug, then Ken. And then I think that'll be the, the end of the call. Uh, go ahead, Doug. Okay, uh, Mark raises the question of family origins. If we look at that, I think we would find that this group is actually very diverse. It's the questions we ask. If we ask the standard gender, identity, racial, racial issues, we're going to come up with standard answers. If we looked at something like, for example, how each of us negotiated the series of wars that the U.S. has participated in since World War II, uh, in World War II, my father joined the Marines. He survived, but barely. Uh, it drove my mother to drink. Uh, the combination drove me to leave home at 15. Uh, there's a point that probably is different than most here. Uh, I just think we need to actually appreciate the incredible richness of who we are, which goes to the question of getting to know each other better. Thanks. I did not know any of those things about you, Doug. Thank you very much for, for telling us about them. Um, Ken, please. Just a, a comment to Michael's comment about um, uh, diversity and, and some of what else has been said here is 
when I first came into this group, I was wicked intimidated by the intellects in the room. Like, holy shit, can I even speak in this group? And I think that's that it, we may not be cognizant of that. Someone coming in here, you know, for the first time, they're going to listen to us and go, holy shit, do I have any right to be here? Do I have standing in this group, you know? And so I just think that that's one thing for us to kind of um, be aware of is, is it is a pretty heady, pretty intellectual group. And um, it's not for everybody. So, you know, who we invite, we have to make sure that that it's going to be something that they want, which is why I've, I haven't had anybody recently to invite because I've, I've invited all my intellectual friends and they showed up and abandoned it for a reason. It's like, it's, I, it's hard to keep coming up with, with people to, to bring in. So my thoughts on that. Thank you. Ken, I've heard that as well from people. I have several friends who, who I have one friend who watches our recordings regularly, much to my surprise. And he's like, I, I don't, I don't think I'd want to be in the calls. Um, and so I, I, I think that we take for granted and, and we've also grooved a lot of things so that this is a comfortable group and we just kind of go at it, uh, in our own way. Um, I think we're pretty good about new people on the call and being welcoming and letting them introduce themselves and being gentle and so forth. I think we're fine, but I, I think that the hurdle is higher than we think it is for wanting to actively show up and show your face and be recorded and be, you know, published on YouTube in calls that are really quite obscure. I think our calls get maybe, I mean, our, our Zoom recordings on average are, are getting 10 to 30 viewings or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll go check and report back, but it's not a lot. This is not uh, Joe Rogan, that's for damn sure. Uh, Stuart. Quickly, I just put this in, a ch in the chat. I agree with Gil that the, that the lack of diversity is important because of missing perspectives. That's the important thing, not anything like, you know, we need to have diversity because we need to have diversity. And what I also just put in chat is if we start doing um, uh, uh, things that are of notice to others, uh, whatever that might look like, um, people will be attracted um, in, in, in some way um, uh, because of value. And, and yeah, maybe we're supposed to be a homogenous group. <laughs> Maybe it's just our density. Mm -hmm. um, plus. Yeah, but we're not a homogenous group. I mean, we each have uh, very deep life experiences. And maybe one commonality that we have is that we are mostly graybeards. You know, because we have life experiences that allow you to shed you know, all the... Uh, package, you know, that we all co up with. I mean, we all have experiences that sort of hampered, you know, our development, and then you have to get through this and advance through it. So we have very diverse backgrounds, uh, very diverse education, uh, life experiences, and so on. Now, the, the, the problem with, with bringing I think when we are talking about diversity, we're thinking about uh, racial differences, right? And particularly getting women into the group and, and all of that. Um, I mean, there may be, there may, maybe that that is uh, outside of the boundaries where you can flex, you know, where from within which you, you can communicate uh, openly. I don't know. But I, I would uh, I would argue we are highly diverse. Uh, I mean, my I grew up in Germany. You know, I don't have a college education. Uh, so the the uh, uh, I started as a cook. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was working, spent a lifetime in the kitchen. You know, and so on. So so uh, uh, yeah. I mean, the these life experiences create the lens through which we see the world you know, and interpret what's going on around us. So, no, I think uh, there is plenty of diversity here. Klaus, what is your favorite dish to make? <laughs> uh, I don't know that I have a favorite dish. I have a whole bunch <clears> of <throat> stuff. I'm whatever I'm in the mood for. You know, I like spicy food. And, you know, I, like, uh, I like colorful foods. You know. Excellent. Well, oh, thanks. Uh, Stacy, please. I just, I just want to make one observation. And I'm going to leave it. We're at the end of the call, but I, 
<laughs> hopefully it'll be a learning. With all the talk of the lack of diversity, not one person asked me why I thought there were no other women here. And I just want to use that as an observation. Thank you. Stacy, why are there no other women here? <laughs> too little, too late, Stuart. <laughs> you lost your chance. <laughs> um, For today. <laughs> Thanks, Stacey. Yeah, and, and you're right. Um, Ken, do you have a poem for us? I do. Um, I'm going to share something I wrote a few years ago. Uh, I went to see a wonderful play about Don Quixote starring Ron Campbell, who's an amazing uh, performer. And and so I, I wrote this short dialogue between, it's not really a dialogue, it's, it's a question from uh, Don Quixote to Sanchez, Sancho, San, Pan, Pancho Sanchez. Don Quixote, Pancho, the poet. Sancho Panza. San, yes, thank you. Don Quixote, the poet asks, what is madness but nobility of soul at odds with circumstance? I ask, why must nobility clothe itself, nobility of soul clothe itself in a willful, in a willful countenance? The weight of the world will crush any mortal, and most gods too. Surely we can find a different atlas to work with. Is there no other path for one who sees madness all around and proclaims that henceforth they shall dedicate themselves to preserving good whenever it can be invoked and brought forward? Have I gone mad? Have I reached a new level of san or have I reached a new level of sanity when I breathe in the dysfunction of politics and corruption and breathe out a network of cooperating human beings, taking care of the needs of all for food, water, shelter, and dignity before I attempt to solve any other issues? My madness is not like that of the fellow in Cervantes' novel, poor chap. His madness was a romantic sickness for a time of that elevated innocence. My madness has no innocence, but rather the crazed, wide-eyed look of one who has seen the depths to which we can descend and yet still sees the stars above, calling us to dream another dream. I'm stricken with the evolutionary notion that human beings can and will become intelligent enough to design a future where all the things that humanity has longed for in the past are within reach and a bright future is possible. That's not to discount that the passageway between here and there probably isn't wide enough to accommodate the 9 to 11 billion people, and with some difficult choices ahead that will have to be made, I believe we can actually move through this period of collective madness in a relatively short time, say 30 to 50 years, to come to a place where we're able to make the world a much healthier, happier, and more fulfilling place to live for human beings and all the other species we share the world with. We need to be our own saviors now. I mean no offense to the billions of people whose faith sustains them in difficult times and who gain great meaning, nourishment, and purpose through the path of faith. However, when it comes to determining the tide that rises in the affairs of men, God has yet to prove himself or herself a reliable design partner. Then there's the strange enchantment of certain forms of madness, those threads of thinking that travel crooked byways, attracting complexity and creating a simplicity visible only once the whole becomes clear. What of those moments when you see a pattern before it is actually formed? Those moments when the frame shifts from the center to the periphery and back again, revealing another layer of meaning that your old frame of relating has no words for, but that your soul longs to give expression to. What of those moments? Is that magical thinking? Is it madness? Sancho, how mad is it to see a magic shimmer where others see but a dull surface? Imagination is the daringly imagined arch. Reality requires astonishing bridges. Will you surrender your imagination to the demands of reason? When was the world ever reasonable? Dang. Um, can you repeat again where this is from? Uh, I went to see Maroon Shakespeare Company did a play uh, of um, Don Quixote. And this was my reflections after watching that play. Is it a blog post or? I could turn it into one, sure. Um, that'd be that'd be lovely. Um, and then I can weave it into the context. That'd be fabulous. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. That was great. It's lovely. It's a very nice place for us to hit pause on this. I really appreciate all your feedback. Um, more feedback is welcome. This is not the end of how do we level up. Um, I got lots of stuff to think about. So thank you. Ciao.